Very good. So good morning to the Nordics and good afternoon to Singapore. Uh, my name is Sami Askelainen from Nordic Innovation House and I'll be your host today. So it is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you all to our Water Waste and Food Virtual Market Entry Program with our partner session uh, with uh, SEMCORP Industries. And uh, before we kick off, uh, some housekeeping matters as usual. So please keep yourself muted when not uh, presenting or asking questions. We do have allocated some time at the end for the Q&A, but while you are hearing these presentations and if some questions uh, come up, uh, you can post those questions to chat and then we will pick the questions from there at the end. Uh, please also then remember to indicate to whom your question is for. Uh, we are also recording this session and uh, we will send the recording and all the presentation decks to, to everyone in 24 hours after this session. So a uh, very exciting session uh, ahead with SEMCOP Industries. We're very, very lucky to have them uh, uh, with us here in this program. And uh, before we start, so let's have a quick look at our agenda today, which is uh, fairly straightforward. So first we have uh, uh, Taiki, uh, who is a program manager uh, at the SEMCOP Industries, and she is covering more on the wastewater side. And then we're very lucky to have a Daniel Wong, a vice president from Waste to Resource, department and covering more on, on the waste side. And after this, we're gonna hand over then the states to the Nordic companies. So we have 10, 10 great solutions from the Nordics and they're all presenting seven minutes each. And uh, then at the end, we should have that roughly half an hour still for the Q and A. And um, actually that's it from the agenda side. Uh, and before we, before we start, just a quick reminder for the SEMCORP team. So, if and when you want to continue your conversation with some of these uh, Nordic companies who are, you are hearing today, you can book a time uh, uh, from them uh, using the meeting scheduler and just leave your contact details and then we will uh, connect you with, uh, with the respective companies. And now, without any further ado, Kitai, I'm going to hand over to you. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Sammy. Um, perhaps maybe I can welcome our SVP, Adrian Yeo, to give a few words before I start to introduce about Swing. In the meantime, perhaps I can share my slide with everyone um, to kickstart the sharing session. Give me a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. Can I just check if everyone can see the slides? Yeah, all good. Okay, um, Adrian, would you like yeah, to Yeah, hi. Okay. Uh... Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming for this to this seminar. Uh, just a very quick introduction to SEMCORP. Uh, SEMCORP is a Singaporean company. Uh, we are listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange, 49% owned by Tomasic. Uh, we've been in the water business for, I would say, 20 something years, starting from the petrochemical hub in Jurong Island, and we've expanded to the Middle East, China, uh, Vietnam, and a few other places as well. So uh, as part of our, I mean, our role in the company is to look for new innovations uh, from companies like, like the ones that I'm going to present today and see how we can help them grow and integrate them into our business and our offerings to our clients. So the SYNC program is our flagship program to, for, for looking for new technologies and, and commercialization. So I'll let uh, Taiki uh, explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think in this call, I would also like to introduce a couple of our other colleagues from the water team. Um, we have Chen Ying and Yu Chen. I think maybe during the Q&A, they can uh, unmute themselves and they will probably ask a couple of questions to, to the companies here today. And um, I'm not sure if Daniel is really in the call because I can't see. Hey, <laughs> I, I'm in the call already. Hi. Oh, hi, Daniel. Um, I would also like to introduce Daniel Wong as he leads the waste resource department. Uh, I'm sure he's also scouting for new and innovative waste solutions or resource recovery solutions. Um, Daniel, would you like to do a quick introduction of yourself and your team from the waste side? Hey, hello. Hi, everyone. And thanks for your time and to uh, hold this event. Um, I'm Daniel Wong, and uh, as Taiki said, I lead the uh, waste resource team, a very small team in the Center of Excellence, um, um, the same Center of Excellence that uh, Adrian, is, uh, Adrian and Taiki are in. Uh, uh, but I look at the waste resource space, so all solutions and technologies 
revolving around waste, waste management and waste to resource. Okay, thanks Daniel. So in actually in our previous webinar, I think in, in early or mid-March, we actually had the pleasure to introduce our swing program to um, a number of companies that attended the webinar with NIH. So I think some of, I understand that some of the attendees here may not have seen the presentation. So we are happy to actually walk through um, our flagship program, what Swing is about in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And of course, um, after this webinar, we will also send out the deck to the new companies here and let us know if any other queries. So I think Sam, I think Adrian has done a quick introduction of SamCorp. So I think over the past two decades, since we run our centralized waste for the facility, we have an understanding of some of the operational challenges in our wastewater plants and also the pain points that we see in the industry, particularly in the industrial wastewater treatment industry. And moving forward, we therefore see quite a lot of value in deploying newer and more innovative or cost-effective technologies for our plant upgrades or greenfield projects. And in that process, we also want to, um, I would say, shift our collaboration model with um, early to mid-stage water companies I know in the past, I think we go by a vendor to customer relationship. Moving forward, we're hoping to go towards a partnership engagement model where we can work more closely with um, water tech companies to carry out this kind of um, innovative technology transfer and then sort of the promote innovation in the ecosystem, which I think would be a win-win situation for both parties as well. So with that, we launched the Swing program in early 2019. Um, with the main goal is to provide a platform for water companies to collaborate with SEMCORP and in the process, we can then support the companies in their commercialization journey. And we can also help to scale their technologies in our Southeast Asia and Chinese markets in the projects that SEMCOP pursue as well. So for any partners that we bring on board in the program, we focus a lot on building these capabilities through various stages of piloting, validation, localization, and of course, um, commercialization of their products in our projects. And since 2019, we have screened more than 200 technologies for water. And we conducted three technology forums where the shortlisted companies are invited to pitch their solutions to our committees. And for the selected partners, we are able to then provide um, pilot funding or, or some kind of a test bidding funding up to Singapore $100,000, where we cover the, mostly cover the system or installation costs. And so far we have eight partners on board and to which I'll share a little bit more in the later slides. So these are some of the key industries that we focus on. Currently, we already have a strong presence in the petrochemical wastewater markets. As I would say, 90% of our customers are from this industry. And moving forward, we are planning to venture into other industrial markets such as textiles, pharmaceutical, power, food and beverages, and semiconductor. And we understand that these wastewater streams generated are increasingly complex in, in most of these industrial verticals, which will then require a suite of innovative solutions uh, water techn treatment technologies to tackle um, the challenges that are usually faced by our clients. So with that in mind, the program that focuses on six technology domains. Um, we look at process control, whether there's any advanced sensors that can capture data from our plan optimization or any influence monitoring um, initiatives, any digital software technologies that can also provide models to, to design our treatment train or to optimize our plan processes to bring down the cost. Of course, chemical technologies such as include, this includes advanced oxidative or, or adsorptive tech processes um, and sludge management technologies that can also help to reduce um, our sludge production in our wastewater plants, increase efficiencies in drying and methods for um, any sludge repurposing. And I think the overall aim is to reduce the disposal cost for sludge and waste management. And we also look at you know, advanced biological treatment processes is there any technologies that can increase our treatment efficiencies of our existing traditional um, biological process that we can deploy in our centralized projects? And lastly, I think as many companies, including SEMCOP, are moving towards aligning our businesses with sustainability goals, we're also scanning or we're on the lookout for water reuse or rec reclamation or energy reduction technologies. So for example, any cost-effective technologies that can treat high salinity wastewater, brine streams, or any low fouling membranes that can help us to improve our recovery rates. Um, these are the kind of technologies that we also focus on. I think essentially we find that most industrial wastewater technologies that are covered under these areas um, 
uh, that fall within these six categories. But however, I think if there's any solutions that are outside of these six domains, but uh, companies are aware that this plays a part in you know, addressing a certain challenge in the industry, we also welcome them to reach out to us to, to share with us more of their solutions. So each year, we typically launch two cycles of application and each cycle, there will be three main stages in the program roadmap. We usually start with the application process where interested companies can apply by submitting an application form for our review. Thereafter, I think usually we'll select three to four companies to participate in the technology forum and they can then present their solutions or their technology um, value proposition to our steering and advisory committee. And once we pass this evaluation and selection stage, we then move into the acceleration phase, what we call it, where we scope out the project with uh, water companies depending on their technology roadmap. If we proceed to, you know, to carry out any pilot or test bidding projects, the program that can then provide the funding support. Um, for this year's timeline, with um, taking into consideration the COVID uh, situation, I will elaborate more uh, in the later slides, particularly for, for this year's application cycle. So I think from the perspective of early to mid-stage companies, we understand that um, companies usually face a number of barriers when they want to um, enter a certain new market and, or, they, or they hope to scale their solutions in additional markets outside of their um, original country. And some of the common challenges that we see or we hear from the startups that we have met is that you know, the lack of industry inputs um, that they face in order to help them further develop their solutions to cater to the targeted customer base. And if these companies, they do not have the visibility of various markets, it will often hinder their technology um, development roadmap and also affect their product success rates in those markets. And secondly, as most early stage companies have a small team, and if they do secure new projects in those um, in, in certain regions, they often lack a localization team. And otherwise, it is also quite costly for them to travel down often to ensure that you know, the pilot or the projects with their clients run smoothly. And lastly, there are also, you know, a couple of cultural barriers that quite a number of companies face, especially if they venture into the Chinese wastewater market. And um, we have gotten feedback from a number of startups that they are also quite fearful of entering a large market like China or even Southeast Asia in general, because sometimes they are not familiar with the language as well as the culture uh, and the IP protection laws. And therefore, startups usually, they prefer to, um, you know, enter a new market with a trusted partner who is already familiar with the business environment in the foreign country where they can collaborate and then to sort of protect them in this new market that they are venturing into. So I think from SEMCOP perspective, we, we do feel that there, there are some strong synergies between our team and innovative water companies that can help to support the acceleration and adoption of new technologies. For instance, with our wastewater facilities in China, Singapore, and UK, we can provide a range of pilot sites for our partners to test their technologies, solutions, and then to accelerate the product development, or you know, sometimes they just want a validation or demonstration um, project. We also leverage a lot on our local operations team with our decades of experience in operation and engineering expertise, where we can sort of support our partners in localizing a technology to a, to a new engineering standard in various regions that are new to them. And lastly, with um, some course branding and networking, we also aim to support water startups in building their own pipeline of projects in a new foreign market. And I think this also helps to accelerate their market in integration um, journey. So building on to what we shared in the earlier slide, these are some areas, key areas that we, that the Swing program will support our partners. So first and foremost, our partners will be provided with, you know, guidance, market insights on networking opportunities with our advisory committee. Um, our committee is comprised of VC directors and water technology specialists. So with that, we'll work closely with our partners to share also from SEMCOP perspective, our operating experiences and pain points that will um, hopefully help to speed up their understanding of the industry as they um, enter the market. We will also open up our pilot sites in our wastewater plants and we also have an R&D lab in our water hub in Nanjing where our partners can test bait and demonstrate their technologies. And in the last aspect, we will also support companies in their commercialization journey through uh, product integration in our green and brown fuel projects. So they are able to work with our business development team to understand some of the projects in the pipeline in the various industries. Um, if we have a project that comes by in the pharmaceutical industry that can be mapped, for example, that can be mapped to their solutions. This is the kind of um, 
up close and personal interaction that we'll have with our partners where they will sort of have a heads up on some of the projects that we see in, in certain regions, for example. So to share a little bit more about our International Water Hub in Nanjing, which is our main um, headquarters in China for the water team, it is developed in the Sino-Singapore Eco High Tech Island in Nanjing. And this island is actually a government to government initiative be between Jiangsu and Singapore government as they aim to promote um, a vibrant and innovative ecosystem in China for clean tech and water companies to thrive. And within IWH, of course, there are also a wide range of facilities from officers to R&D labs available to support um, our water companies or partners to establish a presence. And if they you know, plan to scale their operations in China, um, Sankop team is also available in the hub to also support their operations there. So I mentioned a bit about our advisory committee. So currently we have two main advisors on board in the program. Dr. Helger, he is a, I, I think perhaps a couple of the companies may have heard of him. He is a investment director from Emerald Technology Ventures and they are, he's leading the water practice there. So Emerald Technology Ventures, they are actually quite well known as they are globally recognized as one of the um, quite a successful clean tech investor with two decades of investment history. Previously, they have secured uh, multiple successful exits to major industry partners. And some of these involvements includes Optimatics, Pure Technologies, um, Inger Technologies, which have all been acquired by Suez, Xylem, and BASF. And also last year, they launched the Global Water Impact Fund of USD 100 million with Thermastic Holdings as one of their cornerstone investors. So um, in addition, he's also the co-founder of uh, Water technology incubator in Singapore called Ripper to Waste. So with him on board, we find that he can provide the insights and guidance from the commercial investment point of view uh, to, to our partners. And on the second note, we have Dr. Anthony Fain. He is a professor from University of New South Wales in Australia. He has been working with membranes for more than four decades. So he's quite well known. Uh, he's a renowned expert in this field of membrane science and technology. And his interest still lies, he's quite active currently, even though he is uh, considered uh, older than most of us. <laughs> his interest lies in water sustainability, particularly in the areas of desalination, water recommendation and use or MBR. And we believe that with both advisors, um, they can provide the necessary guidance from the aspect of the commercial as well as from the aspect of technology R&D field and combining you know, some core expertise in operational um, experience, we can then support the growth of our partners and to improve the sort of maximize the chances of success if we do want to deploy a new solution in, in a new market. So since the launch that we did in 2019, we actually conducted three cycles of technology forums. And these are some of the companies that have participated in the forums and they also pitch their solutions to our committees. Um, all of these companies, they are, they are actually from different countries, ranging from Canada to Israel and to New Zealand. And all of them also fall within you know, different domains in the technology field. So, and so far, I think from the technology offerings that we see from our partner, they, they range from digital technologies to advanced oxidation process, to ammonia removal, to brine treatment, and even to membrane. So it's been quite interesting to see um, the different partners that we brought on board in the past few years. So our technology forum is usually conducted in a physical setting where we invite the companies down to Nanjing um, to meet us and, at the IWH hub. And unfortunately, I think with the COVID situation and taking into consideration the travel restrictions, we then converted the physical forum into an online forum last year. And we reckon that this year will be of similar format. Um, this year's forum will be scheduled on 30th June to 2nd July. Um, it will be spread across three days because we are expecting that the timings will be subjected to the time zones of the respective selected water companies. So it doesn't have to be condensed into one day. It will be dependent on you know, the various um, availability of the attendees. And we actually launched a call for application in the previous webinar we had with um, NIH Singapore. So that was pretty exciting. And the application period it will close at the end of this month, 30th April. So after this call, definitely we'll be sharing this deck as well as our program application form for anyone who is keen to um, work, um, through some, work with SEMCOP through the program and let us know if you have any questions regards to the whole application process. So before I wrap up um, my introduction of the SWING program, I also like to take everyone through this year's program timeline. It will be different this year because I think in, in view of COVID, we're only doing it once this year, there will only be one application cycle instead of two. 
um, judging by the way where companies might not be able to travel freely in the next one to two years, most likely every year we may only be launching one instead of two. And um, the first month will be in, in this month, April, it will be the application um, stage where you know applicants can then select, can then submit their application forms to us. And in the process, we would also conduct maybe an introductory call with them to understand more about their solutions, uh, which we can do it after today's webinar. And in the process, we will then review um, the application forms and the you know the info decks that are submitted by the companies and will notify the shortlisted companies by mid-May. And upon notification, we usually proceed to sign an NDA with the companies. This is so that we can allow both parties to dive into more detailed discussions. Sometimes some call, we, we can share a bit more about our projects in China or in Southeast Asia, and the companies can also exchange some information about their technologies or their case studies. So by the end of May, we are expecting to shortlist three to four companies to present their, their technologies to our steering committee. And therefore, between May to June, we will then be working closely with the shortlisted companies to discuss you know, how their technology can be accelerated in certain industries. And then we also craft up their pitches to prepare for the forum. So there will be sort of more in-depth discussion that, that the company will have with some COP team. And the forum will be held in end of June. Um, and therefore, usually most, I would think, if not all of the three to four companies will usually be confirmed as our, our program partners. And depending on the technology maturity level, and of course, you know, your corresponding roadmap for your technology development, we can then kickstart the collaboration plans from August onwards. It can either be a test bidding or sometimes our certain partners, they have technologies that are relatively more mature and we happen to have a project in the pipeline that suits um, the application, we can then jump straight into discussion with our client directly with SEMCOP facilitating the, that, um, that project discussion and project development. So I would say this in a nutshell concludes um, what Swing program is about and especially for this year's application timeline. Um, I, I, I understand that the Q&A session is probably um, after everyone presents. So let us know if there are any questions about Swing after that and we'll be happy to, to answer your questions. So I'll pass it back to Sammy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kita. And I was very happy to notice there was one pin uh, in the Nordic map. So you've been collaborating with uh, one Norwegian company uh, before, and hopefully we can see more, more pins coming from the Nordics then after, after this program. Uh, very good. And um, so thank you for that. I'm sure there will be a lot of questions coming in, <clears throat> coming in then uh, in the Q&A session. And I also think the timing is quite good because the application uh, deadline is by the end of this month, which is aligned, aligned quite nicely with our, our program. Um, but let's give now the stage then to the Nordic companies. And we will basically, we have grouped the companies in the three different groups. Our first group is all about uh, wastewater related solutions, mainly focusing on industrial waste uh, uh, solutions. Then the group number two is all about organic waste. And then the group number three, we have one company who is uh, focusing on river cleaning and then uh, how to build this uh, community around that to build a more financial and sustainable model for everybody. But uh, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over the stage to Devaco and we have Tony Franti presenting their solutions. So Tony, over to you. Thank you, Sami. Let's see. My name is Tony Franti from Devaco Limited. Thank you all for this opportunity to present our company and offering. I'll begin with a short introduction. Clean water is the best for life, but still 80% of all wastewater is completely untreated. A great number of wastewater treatment facilities need to be built, maintained, and updated as a pastoral solution for this challenge. Good and reliable equipment have a very important role in this. This is where we can help. Under our DEVA brand, we design, manufacture, and sell equipment for sludge thickening, dewatering, and sludge removal. Effective sludge collection and dewatering is important in a fight to stop the climate change and destruction of nature. It enables methods to reach sustainability goals and leads to circular economy by offering alternative source for energy and other uses for the dewatered sludge cake. At least the collected matter is not directly released to the nature. 
We have 35 years of experience in sludge treatment. We specialize in manufacturing high quality equipment that work as designed and promised. And we also offer supervisioning, installation and after sales services. Our equipment are made in Finland and we operate under ISO 9001 standards. Our operations are based in Finland, but in many locations, we are able to support our customers through our partner and reseller network. For sludge and scum collection and removal, we offer chain and flight type chain scraper systems. These are the most sophisticated systems for sludge and scum removal. Our scrapers offer great benefits, optimal and minimum land and space use, high removal efficiency, low capital and maintenance cost, and easy installation. Our superior design and non-metallic DEVA components offer top-class features, performance and durability. These systems can be used in multiple applications such as water and wastewater treatment, oily water, desalination, daft tanks, sand traps and grease removal. We offer all possible configurations for rectangular basins from top to and bottom scraping to multi-layer systems and supply all the needed accessories for these systems including scum pipes, beach plates and system controls. In sludge thickening and dewatering, our solutions are based around belt filter presses and gravity belt thickeners. Belt filter presses offer great advantages such as low energy consumption, suitability for various applications and relatively high sludge dryness. Total lifetime costs are extremely competitive. Investment, running and maintenance costs are low and the presses have a very long lifespan. Reparations are rather easy, cheap, and do not require long standing times. Our portfolio covers solutions from small scale to high capacity municipal and industrial projects, or alternatively from cost effective solutions to industry leading features. We supply all the needed accessories for full dewatering cell, including flocculators, polymer units, control systems, and conveyors. We are continuously developing our products. One of our ongoing development projects is to bring cloud-based and AI-assisted monitoring to our systems. This offers various benefits, such as decreased power consumption, extended system lifetime, and overall process optimization. Our equipment are trusted and used by municipal and industrial customers worldwide, from small private companies to leading international contractors. Here you can see a few of our partners and customers. Our track record includes over 3,500 chain scraper systems and over 1,000 belt filter presses and gravity belt thickener deliveries to over 80 countries. Next, I will show you a few example cases. Langat Centralized Sewage Treatment Plant in Malaysia is a mega project treating wastewaters coming from nearly a million people. For this project, we delivered 96 chain scraper systems and 48 scum pipes. Kamana sewage treatment plant is Manilad's mega project in Philippines that will treat wastewaters from about 1.2 million households. Our full product portfolio will be used in this project for sludge and scum removal and dewatering. I have our biggest and fastest growing market, China, as an example of a specific market area. I have selected Wengzhou wastewater treatment plant as an example case. For this challenging project, we deliver 10, 24 two layer chain scraper systems that help to solve the challenges with space limitations in a partly underground plant construction. In order to showcase the business opportunities that our equipment offer, I want to mention Atal Engineering. Atal is one of our six resellers in China. This huge company is one of the leading Chinese electrical and mechanical engineering groups. They began as our customer in a contractor role as they needed equipment for their own projects. Based on the successful and profitable projects, they have developed DEVA chain scraper systems and related services to be one of their actual business lines stretching outside the typical contractor role. We know that it takes much more than just good equipment to make the customer happy and reach a successful delivery project. Good products, overall quality, know-how, flexibility, accuracy, honesty, and right attitude are all needed to establish trustworthy partnership. Choose DEVA for smoother projects, better processes, overall cost savings and cleaner future. We want to find new business opportunities and we believe that many companies operating in this field can benefit from our offering. We can operate directly with end customers, but typically cooperation is done with contractors. Most importantly, we are looking for resellers to be our local partners 
For this, we have great needs in Southeast Asia and in Singapore. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for your time and please contact us if you find any of this interesting or want to know more. Very good. Thank you so much, Tony, for your presentation. Uh, also, our next company is coming from Finland and we have Mikko Sivonen uh, presenting Flutex Solutions. Mikko, over to you. Uh, it's a bit soft. No, we cannot hear you. Miko, can you try again? Your voice was quite soft. Maybe if it... Uh, it's still quite soft. There was start. Do you hear me? Okay. okay, now it's much better. Very good. So, yes, Flutec is a Finnish based company uh, with over a thousand installations worldwide. We, we have also uh, partners in Southeast Asia and China, but we are looking for new ones. We are a technology company with 14 uh, patents, including Singapore and China. We have a ISO 9001 certification. We have a solutions and technologies for river to river, including water recycling. So technologies for index screening, water treatment, Oil feed water condensate polishing, flue gas condensate treatment and recycling, process water treatment and recycling, oil and grease removal, wastewater treatment and water reuse. Some highlights about the technology intake screening. We have a traveling basket filters and ram basket filters for different applications and uh, in uh, desalination plants, industrial plants, municipal plants, and cooling water screening. One example is from uh, Metsapfitre byproduct mill, Finland, with capacity of 10 cubic meter per second. Uh, the other example is from the Nesta oil refinery, having traveling basket filters with capacity of 8.3 cubic meter per second. Uh, to add the technology to highlight is glued up this sold air flotation. So there are over 500 installations globally for different applications in wastewater treatment, water treatment, process water treatment and recycling and oil and grease removal. It's a unit for uh, very high flows with one, one unit over 3000 cubic meter per hour with high efficiency and shallow structure, 0.9 meter water depth. One example from Southeast Asia we have in Taiwan for tertiary treatment with capacity of uh, 1,400 cubic meter per hour with one unit. And the other example is for the oil and, and solid removal with capacity of 2,100 cubic meter per hour in Marafik Yambu, Saudi Arabia. Then we have also the third uh, technology to highlight here is our patented MBBR technology called Flubed, where the biofilm is growing on the carriers and the movement of the carriers are caused by the tailor-made bottom aeration mixing system. We have different type of media for different applications in industrial and municipal plants for removal of organics or, for example, nitrogen. One example in uh, Southeast Asia, we have in Thai paper uh, concain, the plant with capacity of 625 cubic meter per hour. And also in uh, New Zealand, we have a plant with capacity of 500 cubic meter per hour. 
As a summary, um, we are offering resource efficient proven technologies and know-how to produce high quality water for different purposes in industrial plants and power plants, as well as to minimize and decrease water consumption, energy and chemical usage and environmental impact. We are looking for a partner for water management in industrial and power plants in Southeast Asia and, and China. So thank you for your attention. All right, thank you so much, Mikko, for your presentation. And uh, next company on the stage will be Scanwater and we have Tao Huang presenting. Tao, over to you. Thank you, Sammy. I just uh, share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, good morning and good afternoon. Um, my name is Tao. I'm a sales and the marketing director at uh, Scandinavia Water Technology. So who we are? Uh, we are a Norwegian company uh, called Scandinavia Water Technology and in short, Scanwater, an engineer company dealing with the water business. And also we are private owned company and based in Norway since 1985. We are part of a muscle minion group. Muscle minion is owned by 100% by the management established in 1922. We have around 170 employees and about a hundred of them are engineers. So muscle minion group owns company in Norway, Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Natovia, France, and China in different locations, about 15 locations in the world. So what Scanwater specializes in providing? We provide different solutions in humanitarian aid and the municipal preparedness, as well as a water solution as a turnkey basis project. So increase of urban population impose the higher environmental challenges to the modern cities. At the same time, city must optimize the well-being and minimize its environmental impact. In many of urban areas, the sewer system are overloaded and not able to develop it further. In addition, through the current handling of the organic household and also the toilet waste, on the one hand, the valuable resources are lost. And on the other hand, stress the handling or handling and or treatment infrastructure. But also, if not treated properly, contribute to the environmental pollution. So Scanwater conducted the expert uh, experiment on the development of the innovative uh, water management solution green energy. This green energy is under the CEU Green Project, Horizon 2020, a smart green solution for the integrated water and the sanitation, stormwater management, energy, energy supply, and the nutrient management in the city based on the principle of a resource recovery and the safe reuse aims to increase the resilience of the city make urban development more climate, environmental, and human friendly with nearly zero emission, circular economic, no climate and water footprint. And try to elaborate a little bit in the building infrastructure. Green energy will reduce water consumption by using water saving fixture as a vacuum toilet and reuse a gray water source facilitate the recycle of the nutrients to the urban and the pure urban agriculture, and the source almost eliminate pollutions of the surface water. Integrated with the biogas reactor, we are allow biogas production from the toilet waste, the black water, and the organic household waste, delivering heat and the power, but also nutrient retained to the support greenhouse food production. The innovative element of the green energy is a well-balanced 
combination of the technology and also social innovations that facilitate reduce water consumption, the minimal, the minimization of the greenhouse gas emission, the promotion of reusing CO2 and the waste-based nutrients in local greenhouse. The production of the biogas or energy from the domestic organic waste, the production of the fertilizer from the domestic organic waste, and promotion of the ecological sanitation. So far, we have uh, pilot projects in different locations. We have three in China, two projects in Beijing, and one in China, south of China, as well as one in Norway. I hoping we are hoping and looking for uh, to fund the local partners, which can de develop together in the local market. So please contact us for further information if you are interested in our solutions. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Tao. And uh, then we're going to move back to Finland. And next company is called uh, Sophie Filtration. And we have Ville Hakala presenting. Ville, over to you. Thanks, Sami. Greetings from Finland, the happiest country in the world. I'm just uh, pulling out the presentation here. Okie dokie. And here you should see the presentation in full. Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, I'm the CEO and co founder of Sophie Filtration, and we have developed an innovation in industrial water filtration that we call the Sophie Filter. Now, the water is a challenge for the next decade, that's uh, no doubt. And what we are looking at our, our specific niche there is the industrial wastewaters to minimize or, or these zero liquid discharge operations. Now, uh, in processing industry, uh, one co often comes across to large streams of water that contain these very fine particulates that do not settle efficiently with gravity. So, some other technologies may be needed. Here on the left hand side, we have a picture from a zinc refinery with calcium carbonate uh, contaminated water. And on the right hand side, we have a filtrate uh, that has been run through Sophie filter with a 10 micron screen. Our technology has three key features. Uh, we use uh, a, a novel high velocity cross flow uh, uh, method to get the high capacity through a compact size. Then we use metal wire mesh filter elements, sustainable ones. They go from 0.3 micron up to 20 micron. So the, chi the screen pore size can be, um, can be changed according to the application. And that means that we don't require those disposable filter, cartridge filters or back filters. Thirdly, we use a very powerful integrated ultrasonic cleaning method coupled by an air assisted back pulse, meaning in a manner of, uh, of seconds, the system automatically and mechanically cleans itself. So it doesn't require chemicals uh, uh, for cleaning. So all this combined, it doesn't require operator attention. So our scope of service usually uh, includes a, a, a trial sample in our laboratory, either in, uh, in Espo, Finland or in, in Houston, Texas. So we take a 50 liter sample, test the general filterability, then go to the field, for example, for one or two weeks, uh, uh, a long-term uh, performance testing. Then it's of course dimension and build the system. And then uh, the after sales uh, services that can include, for example, remote monitoring and control. This is a, a highlight of, of how the system combines the, the, the digital nature of it. Uh, so we have, a, for example, a remote location. We have a discharge water that goes through Sophie filter. Uh, we have sensors that, uh, that are um, analyzing the feed quality and the effluent quality. Then we collect that data to a cloud and we have a back, uh, feedback loop to our system so we can optimize the system's performance with that data. Uh, this is a case example for, from Finland. So we have a, 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 a one euro uh, per cubic meter tariff on the fresh water use, two euros for discharge water. So that's three euros per cubic meter total. Uh, while if, if the client uses Sophie filter, 
they can save uh, even 90% uh, of their water treatment uh, related or water related costs in their operation. Here's a case example of a municipal uh, uh, combined heat and power plant where they, they use a combustion to burn the waste and then that creates a condensate stream that they, they use to discharge. So they were wasting that water. Uh, after that, they, they, we installed SOFI filters there as a pretreatment uh, uh, prior to high temperature reverse osmosis. So the client could uh, reuse that water as a makeup water and not only save that water, but also the energy. So we, we got it hot, hot back to the plant. Less than a year payback time in this case. Uh, we are looking at industries uh, 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 mainly, so power generation, mining, uh, chemicals, for example, the microplastics, it's interesting, uh, marine scrubbers, upstream oil and gas, and we have a couple of uh, uh, pilots now going in steel mills in, in Italy, actually. Uh, the team has over 50 years of experience in water treatment. Uh, the co-founders are from minerals processing background, so we wanted to build a very robust system that can be operated in the in a, in a lot of different conditions. And we have actually help from, uh, from a guy here on the left-hand side in the, in the lower uh, side is the Steve Glock, who is actually, I think he's working with Aquafortus that was, uh, that was mentioned earlier in this call. And he's our global R&D uh, manager and also the director of US operations. There are a number of clients and references. Um, most of them are Nordic and, and, and so very local, not, uh, not maybe acknowledged by, uh, by all of them, all of the people in this call, but we do have Anglo-American there, which is our first installation from 2014 and operating ever since. And maybe also interesting that was, uh, we actually have uh, introduced Emerald Technology Ventures as one of our investors uh, last year. And I think we were the first investment from the Global Water Innovation Fund that was, uh, that's the 100 million uh, uh, fund and Helge Dable who was also mentioned uh, earlier in this call is, is our board uh, member in SOFI. Now, what we are looking for, for, for this specific program, we are looking, of course, uh, what kind of market opportunities we have. We are looking for uh, piloting projects where we could have a, a niche need for, for our um, technology. We are looking at uh, uh, channel to market partnerships, which are typically systems uh, integrators. So we will provide the core IP of, of Sophie filter, our self-cleaning microfiltration system. And then we have a partner who builds the, the system around it and then uh, for the end uh, user installation. Uh, like mentioned, we are based in, uh, in Espo, Finland. We have a subsidiary in the United States and we have sales partners around Europe and the North America. And I want to just mention, maybe I have a few minutes. So we had a few recent cases here that I want to show. So a plastics I mentioned, microplastics removal, two 40-foot sea containers uh, with Sophie filter equipment, uh, treating the discharge water prior to Baltic Sea. We have a, a case in Kentucky in the United States with uh, 0 0.5 micron screens. That's with our partner in, uh, in Pennsylvania. Produce water treatment, uh, actually the end user in Argentina, two containers with our systems with the three micron screens. And then finally, a uh, 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 first delivery is quite recent one for, for marine scrubber wastewater treatment where we provide the, the, our SOFI filter systems together with the filter presses. So that, that, that's a, uh, uh, like a turnkey delivery. All that was right. uh, my presentation. Thanks. All right. Very good. Thank you so much, Phil. And also then our next company is coming from Phil, uh, Finland. It's called Valmet and we have Heli Kairala uh, presenting their solution. So Heli, over to you. Thank you very much, Sami. I will share my presentation one moment. Um, Sorry, I can't find it. Is there? Okay. All right. Very good. Yes, so you can see it now. Yeah. Okay. So um, my name is Heli Karaila, and I'm working as a business manager in Finland. And uh, together with uh, Valmet Indonesia, uh, 
colleagues, uh, we will participate to this to this uh, Nordic Innovation House event. Sorry, I tried to change the slide. Takes a little bit of time, sorry about that. Uh, Valmet is a global technology company. We are our head office is located in Finland. Uh, last year, our net sales was uh, 3.7 billion euros, and there are over 14,000 professionals working globally. Wastewater is one of the growth area for Valmet automation business line. There is lack of accurate and reliable real-time measurement and optimizer applications, especially for the wastewater sludge process area. Sludge process is very challenging for the real-time measurement because typically there is that much air and debris and grease in the process. Based on the end customer feedback, about 30% of the wastewater plant operational costs are coming from the sludge processing and sludge further treatment costs. Because of lack of reliable measurement and control solutions, processes are controlled manually, uh, mainly manually based on visual look or laboratory values. So there is really big possibility to improve the process performance and decrease operational costs uh, via reliable uh, applications real-time measurement and uh, mass flow-based control applications. Malmet has offering for this need. So based on the over 50 years measurement technology development, what we have done, especially in the pulp and paper business area, we have advanced industrial quality measurement technology offering available to the wastewater sector. And it is very important that we have not only moved those uh, technologies from pulp and paper sector to the municipal, uh, uh, municipal and industrial wastewater process area, but we have further developed the technologies that they really fit to the, to the wastewater process area. And this has been done together with our end customers. We have over 2000 uh, real time measurement references available globally with excellent customer benefits. In order to get full benefit of the advanced real-time measurement, Valmet has developed uh, also sludge dewatering optimizer application called Valmet SDO. And uh, this optimizes the solid uh, amount in the scent rate and uh, dewatering sludge, at, especially in the centrifuge process area. It also minimizes the polymer usage. With Valmet DNA automation system, it is possible to automate the whole wastewater process. Valmet DNA includes process optimization, information management, environmental reporting, and condition monitoring. For Valmet, it is very important to support end customers via services during the whole uh, life cycle in order to reach the best performance. Valmet industrial internet solutions are an important part of uh, our offering. Valmet uh, solid uh, measurements are used especially in the sludge process area. So, and we can really cover all sludge process solid measurement need in that area. The Valmet industrial internet solutions combine advanced monitoring of the wastewater plant, data driven optimization and remote services from Valmet Performance Center into comprehensive solutions. The purpose is to efficiently utilize data and Valmet expertise to provide tangible benefits for our customers. We have a number of documented uh, customer result cases available and here is here are a couple of these this is coming the first one is coming from finland tampere vinikanlahti wastewater plant and in this uh, case uh, we were able to reduce uh, centroid solid about uh, by 50 percent the the dewatering sludge uh, was uh, increased over 30 percent 
and uh, the polymer usage was decreased with 50% in this case. Uh, the other case is coming from South Africa, and in this case, uh, the customer was able to reduce polymer usage by 20% in its uh, wastewater plant. The third case is coming from China, and we have nowadays over 200 uh, reference cases available in China market area. And this is one of those, uh, the end customer decided to, to inc include uh, a valmet real-time measurement to the primary area as well as to the sludge dewatering process area. So there are good uh, reference cases available, and of course the saving depends on the size of the plant, and uh, the, uh, there are good, good uh, really saving possibilities. As an, as an example, here is one case from U North America, and customer reported over 1.2 million US dollar savings annually. The payback time can be as short as only a couple of months. Uh, we, in Singapore area, we have also reference cases available, but those are still in the very early phases, so we don't have reported uh, documentation available yet from those. Like you mentioned uh, in the beginning of this, uh, this uh, afternoon session, um, um, Singapore is, a, is the water hub in the Asia area. And really, in this event, we want to promote and show the benefits of using Valmet wastewater solution in Singapore as well as in Southeast, a a a Southeast Asia area. So we like to have new customer contacts, so operator contacts, as well as new business partner con contacts, EPCs, distributors, engineering offices, and service providers. So thank you very much on behalf of uh, us. And uh, here is still our contact, uh, contact uh, information. And looking forward to a good discussion in the coming weeks. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Helen. And um, Evren, how does it look like at your end? No, no it's fine. OK, no, it's fine. all right. Um, Eric, so we will we will stick to the original uh, order. So uh, without any further ado, then uh, we're going to hand over the stage then to Evren. Uh, she will be presenting article spin. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me start. Hi, I'm Evran Dönmez, CEO of Artas Finn, House of State-of-the-Art Solutions in Environmental Technologies. Artas Finn R&D expertise is capitalized on 40 years of engineering and manufacturing legacy of Artas sister companies in Germany and in Turkey. We design, produce, and implement water, waste, air, and bioenergy solutions. We cover all four aspects of the environmental technologies. In water, we deliver pretreatment, filtration, softening, desalination, demineralization, and ultra pure water. In wastewater, we deliver physical, chemical, biological, anaerobic, aerobic, attached growth systems or MBR technologies together with sludge digestion and dewatering plants. Equally, we have flue gas treatment and bioenergy solutions. We designed and supply over 400 customers. This is one of our client testimonials. To that customer, we delivered a customized, tailor-made, fully integrated solution, kind of Lego blocks, targeting their water and organic waste problems. It also gives our customers the comfort of having one soul responsible for all environmental needs. Our technologies solve problems dealing with access to clean water for drinking in rural and urban settings, water treatment for specific industrial use, wastewater reuse and recycling, wastewater and sludge disposal, organic waste management, waste gas treatment, and renewable energy from waste. We have experience in projects catering for 100 to 100,000 people. 
Our philosophy is providing integrated, modular, customized solutions operating with renewable energy. We drive change towards circular economy. Our products include Arto reverse osmosis unit, Aruf ultrafiltration system, Armo mobile ultra pure water treatment plant, Arpac activated sludge based sewage treatment system, RMBR membrane bioreactor based biological wastewater treatment system integrated with solar panels, Kimpak chemical wastewater treatment system, Ardes chemical and biological desulfurization and flue gas treatment system, Armut compact and modular biogas system. As a perfect example to our integrated and holistic approach, this is a five-star hotel resort where there is limited road access. We develop a fully integrated and standalone solution. We treated the wastewater for recycling. We took the sludge, gardening waste, and together with the biodegradable kitchen waste, we fed them into our compact biogas plant where we generated biogas. The generated fertilizer at the outlet is completely safe to be used at recreational areas of the hotel. With our RMBR solution, we provide very high quality treated water that can be reused for many purposes. When integrated with solar panels, the system can work as a standalone solution in remote areas. Armut is our compact biogas solution that can be used both as a sludge and organic waste digester. This is a water desalination and demineralization plant that we delivered to CMAS where we used our Arto and Aruf systems. We do have a mobile uh, water treatment systems named Armo. Armo is ultimately designed as a plug and play system. It meets either potable or ultra pure water needs and can be easily relo relocated and deployed one location to another. It's a perfect system to meet urgent and unexpected instant water demands. We also provided containerized water treatment plants for the International Committee of the Red Cross in order to produce potable water in Yuba, South Sudan. This project has a potable water production capacity of 12,000 cubic meters per day, which meets the demand of 80,000 people living in the region. That's a good example how much we can go beyond expectations with a fully containerized sol solution. As a stationary and integrated solution, I would like to give you the example of the plant that we delivered to POSCO. We delivered raw water and demineralized water treatment system together with industrial and sewage wastewater treatment system, which was designed with MBR technology. As I'm approaching to the end of my presentation, I would like to highlight this municipal wastewater treatment plant. This plant was designed with fixed plim attached growth activated sludge technology. The bacteria grows on the submerged plastic media and with this particular design, we treat the same amount of wastewater in one third of the space needed of a normal activated sludge plant. As a workshop solution provider, we design, manufacture, implement, and operate fully integrated solutions without any third party intervention. This is what sets us apart from other solutions in the market. Our edge allowed us to cater diverse portfolio of customers. We have designed and delivered solutions to international companies and NGOs globally. We chose Singapore as a hub to scale up our technologies and operations in Asia. We see promising opportunities in the region. In Singapore, we have already engaged a local representative. We see the future in Asia. We like to partner with prestigious entities, both on the public, private, NGO, and venture capital space. We are looking for opportunities to deploy our proven containerized and integrated solutions and partner with leading players for stationary solutions in Southeast Asia. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Evren. Thank you, Chris. Right. 
Okay, and then our next company is coming from Norway. We have actually two companies presenting a joint solution. Uh, we have N2 Applied and then Reclima, and we have Eric and uh, Ivar on the stage. Uh, Eric, over to you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks uh, for having me here. Uh, my name is uh, Eirik Dahlberg, and I'm the head of global sales at N2 Applied. And with me in this program is Ivar Hagmund, CEO of Reklima. 30 years from now, we will have a global population of 10 billion people which means we will need to increase food production by a massive 50% compared to the current situation. And this we need to do in a sustainable way, lowering the greenhouse gas, removing pollution and stepping away or at least minimizing the level of mineral fertilizer today used. In Singapore, you have a waste problem and here I have uh, highlighted the food waste uh, which represents 750,000 tons yearly uh, potentially 1.25 terawatts uh, that otherwise could be delivered to grid. We can be uh, part of uh, solving both these problems both the global and the local one. Uh, where you can get rid of your waste and uh, delivering power to grid. And by using our uh, end to applied plasma unit, you can then create a supercharged nitrogen enriched organic fertilizer or NEO from your digestate that can be used for rooftop farming and other fields and greenhouses and at the same time then minimizing the greenhouse gas footprint and pollution. Um, in the process, we are then using some of the green electricity for our plasma, uh, converting this uh, digestate into a marketable product. Sustainability all the way through. Uh, this is just some uh, snaps taken from a field trial that we did in the UK at Bingham Farm in uh, Northern Ireland. Um, they have a uh, biogas plant at the farm and uh, this is uh, proven successful and uh, workable. So the main drivers that we have, they are both global and local for you in Singapore. Uh, we are addressing the uh, growing population. Uh, we also look at the Paris Climate Agreement uh, and the need of uh, reducing uh, global emissions. And for you, then uh, you will be able to uh, reduce or handle um, the waste that you have locally. Then uh, over to you, Ivar. Thank you, Eric. Good afternoon. My name is Ivar Hagmund. I'm representing Klima, um, and I'm happy to, to be invited here. Reklima is an R&D company owned by four act, uh, actors in a um, biogas plant in, in uh, close to Oslo. And our, Reklima is handling all the R&D regarding um, putting a uh, circular waste handling with that end uh, product uh, is food. Uh, one slide, please. We are today handling 20% of all food waste in Norway uh, throughout uh, a biogas plant, which uh, combined uh, uh, manure for from the farmers. And uh, we make biogas. And from that, we have a digestive coming out, which we also use for producing food. Combined with that, we take the CO2 from the biogas production and stimulate in a, in a greenhouse, which um, accelerate the, the food and reduce the CO2 on output. We use uh, from the garden compost we use to produce uh, a growing material to, uh, and also we use the fertilizer from our plant 
to have a hundred percent production without uh, further, uh, um, um, uh, fertilizer produced from uh, NOx, and also we do not use pesticides. Our plant is uh, special while we have a new technology on the, on the greenhouse technology. Next slide, please. Which has inside we used all our organic material from the, the production of the biogas. We are also having worms to stimulate the, the soil. And this is 100% uh, organic production of, of, uh, of food inside the greenhouse. The greenhouse in itself is made, next slide please, as a concept, which is a pilot today. It's, one, it's about 700 square meters production area, which is a, a technology with a bubbles, uh, soap bubbles to reduce the, um, the um, the UVs and emission and this and we also are able to make a special climate in this greenhouse to reduce the opening hours on the greenhouse which gives us the possibility to catch more of the CO2 coming from the biogas plant so it's an integrated integrated solution of production at the moment we are testing big scale and uh, uh, production, which are uh, a total supplier of waste handling and food production. And now we downscaling for the, uh, the urban areas uh, for the next level. We see to uh, have a, a small community having an, a total solution of handling their own waste in a biogas plant and uh, also having a, a, a greenhouse on top of the roof and using their own soil or using the or fertilized are, are concepts we are, are working at at the moment. We have partners from, from, the, from the universities in Norway to join us on this. So what we're looking for in this uh, approach to, to Singapore, we are looking for investors to, to strengthen our, our possibilities to do, develop. We are looking for partners for this duration of our new technology and solutions, access to influencers, and also to be a partner in the coming projects on, on circular food production through waste handling. Okay, thank you so much, Ivar and Eric. We were running a little bit out of time with you guys, so we're going to move forward then. Um, our next company is called Norsk Bio Biocast, and we have Ule presenting. So Ule, over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome and thank you for showing interest in Norsk Biogas. Uh, it might be that uh, Norsk Biogas technology is a little bit out of uh, SEMCOM's scope of supply and, and, and business areas, but I take my chance. I start my presentation asking the question, why pretreatment? Food waste handling is complicated. It's complicated because it, it uh, involves several disciplines, technologies, and attitudes. There are four main sources where food waste occurs, all with their distinct differences, both in terms of the composition of the waste itself, but also in terms of internal handling, collection, and logistics in use. This complex pair with partly opposite interests create an environment where impurities always will occur. Contamination is the problem. The end product from pretreatment of food waste is an energy-rich slurry we normally refer to as substrate. Through the biological process in the digester, biogas and digest is produced. Beside that, impurities in the substrate may cause processual problems 
it's the generation of the digestate state that worries the most. Digestate state is first class natural fertilizer where all nutrition are kept intact. It is obvious that a contaminated digestate state neither will nor should be accepted in agriculture. Stricter standards are under elaboration, especially focus the problems that arise with micro and nanoplastics. I have been within the recycling industry for more than two decades, most of them in the waste to energy sector. During that period, we have seen many different technologies and designs of pretreatment systems in use. As far as I understand, are the two observations and concerns that needs to be addressed in this context. First, most, if not all, system designs are different. And second, the content of degradable matter that follow the reject due to insufficient separation, in most cases, is significant. It is reasonable to think that, there's, that there over the years has been a lack of focus on pretreatment in general, leading to insufficient solutions. However, we observe that the industry now has come to terms with that the pretreatment is a bottleneck that must be focused more seriously. In my mind, there are no doubt that it is possible to purify food waste many different ways, problem is that many processing steps is investment intensive and drive OPEX high. Simplicity, solidity and standardization is our way of thinking and we feel that we are cracked the code with over pretreatment systems. The core of the system. The BICEP has proven its efficiency and sturdiness of over more than 10 years in operation. The machine works in a batch driven process based on a patented centrifuge principle. As you can see from the prestanda, it's a multi-source machine with the capacity to process liquid and solid waste. The machine performs in three steps, separation, reject cleaning, and reject drying. Since the separation steps do not involve any form of cutting or size reduction, the amount of microplastics are to a minimum. Here's our system, the bio pre-plant. We strongly believe in standardization. The fact that the process design enables a more scientific approach in regard to development and trim over the system. It enables exchange of data and data mining from all plants in operation, in addition to cooperation and training among operators of the system. The BOP system is fully automated and may be controlled remote. Average throughput in this con configuration we see here at one shift is 20 tons yearly. Until now, we have installed seven pretreatment systems in Scandinavia, basically to municipal owned waste facilities. Three of our installations are planning for extensions and multiplication of biceps the coming year. All plants are used as showcases and to a certain extent, training grounds. I presume you already know the basics about our company. Let me just add a few things. Norsk Biogas was funded solely on the invention of the BICEP technology and the BOP plant process design as a specialized company within food waste handling. Last year, we decided to involve ourselves developing pretreatment solutions for other companies complex waste streams as well. Through the, co the cooperation with the Polar Metallurgica, we also get access to expertise and equipment gear, the dry part of the recycling industry. Altogether, this is, will enable us to develop further and give us direction in the years to come. Except for our home market, Scandinavia, Norsk Biogas aim to play a role in the coming food waste shift within the EU, where more than 47 million tons needs of food waste need to find its way to the digesters. We believe our technology and way of thinking fits the task in hand perfect. The Southeast region, Asia region, as we see it, is a matter of cooperation and long-term thinking. The region are in various stages of development in terms of economy, legislations, etc. In addition, we know from assignments in Bangladesh and Korea that the waste itself 
is very different from what comes out of the European Union. This calls for a SAA-based partnership. We strongly believe that the right partner also can play a role in our, our European and Scandinavian markets, whether we talk about products, services, or competence. To be able to operate in any market, in addition to the technical products itself, one need marketing capacity and a sales force that can find and contract business opportunities. A strong engineering capacity is needed, basically within the discipline of process engineering. And finally, with a financial capacity to meet tendering requirements. Thank you very much for your attention. All right. Thank you so much, Ola, for your presentation. And uh, then we're going to take the last company from the second group, which is all about organic waste. We have Terra Marine and uh, Tour Lev is presenting their solution. Yes, uh, thanks a lot. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to um, present uh, Terra Marine. That's a Norwegian company. Uh, I'm a chairman of the, uh, the company. Uh, and we are working mostly with organic waste and uh, offering solutions for recycling. Um, as we know, there are several technologies uh, that are processing organic waste. And the, the goal is mostly with those to minimize uh, the, the amount because it looks upon a uh, kind of a, a problem and also to stabilize it. Um, we have another way of thinking of it in the way that uh, the organic waste has a value. It is a resource that should be recycled and brought into new production of food. Because most uh, organic waste is rich in nutrients and have a high concentration of organic material, and that is really preferred among farmers in Southeast Asia. So from my point of view, incineration of organic waste should not be a part of our green future. If we look at different solutions for the use of, let's say, the sweet sludge, food waste, actually, um, the quality of the sludge or the organic waste has a high impact on what you can use it for. And with a high quality, we prefer to make mineral organic fertilizer or organic fertilizer out of it. And we developed that solution many years ago as the first company in Europe. Um, we, what we do is actually to evaluate the waste and look at the quality and what we can use it for, like heavy metals, bacteria, organic pollutants, and discuss the potential further treatment with the waste owner to find the best solution for, for the future. And then we take responsibility for bringing the organic waste back to farmland as a fertilizer and closing the cycle. Of course, from uh, organic waste might very often be a kind of a wet cake. And a wet cake cannot be used as a fertilizer in the farming areas in Southeast Asia. In Vietnam, where we are working, we speak about 60 million farmers that are only using pellets in small bags. So what we need to do is to, to dry the product and pelletize it. And we have different technologies available for doing that job, actually. Um, and what we do is that we are, we are taking the organic waste and we are mixing it with different kinds of other waste, other organic sources, minerals, and making a long variety of different fertilizer products that is suitable for tropical agriculture. We can also uh, handle liquid-based fertilizer. That means that actually it is, uh, might be some products from food processing industry. It can also be from a biogas plant where we have evap evaporated uh, the liquid to have high concentration of, of, of minerals and use it as a fertilizer in the same market. We have been doing a lot of field trials in Vietnam in the last seven years. And uh, you, 
we are using the organic fertilizer that is mainly made from biosolids. And we see that actually it tremendously changes the growth and the fertility of the soil, as you can see on these two photos here. We established many years ago also a company in Vietnam, actually to be the one that can handle the, the, the products we today are selling and delivering from Norway, first of all, but also from Japan, from Denmark, Qatar and South Korea, where we find products that are suitable for use as a, as a fertilizer. And, and uh, our people there are specialists within marketing, logistics, finance and R&D. And we have um, also spending a lot of time actually to, uh, to work with farmers, train them actually to use these products in the market. And we are organizing the transport of the products to Vietnam. And we are also doing the repacking and storage, handling it in the local uh, society there. So then you can ask why, what about Singapore in this context or other of these big cities in Southeast Asia or Asia? And of course, that uh, Singapore has a good reputation in Southeast Asia. And the products from Singapore will be welcomed in the farmer's market. It is in these countries like local products has, low, um, has not the same value as when it comes from com uh, countries where they look upon as, uh, as industrialized and, uh, and has focus on quality. And what we have been doing with the, with the, with the sewage lab, especially from Singapore, where have, that we have seen that the heavy metal content is very low. It is very much like the same we have in, in Norway. So it is well suited as an organic fertilizer. So in that well, we, we are very eager to go in dialogue with companies that are looking for better solutions for organic waste, where we can participate in evaluating the quality and the market potential. We can reduce the cost compared with, uh, with incineration, definitely. And we can give our customers a better story with full recycling or with the new production of food. Because as I said, I don't think that incineration of organic material and nutrients is a good story. So when it comes to the Sankov, after being read, reading about you, uh, um, my statement is that, uh, that uh, the nitrogen and the phosphorus and organic material are usable um, uh, elements, actually. Uh, many people are talking about they're taking the phosphorus out of the organic material, but I believe that when we look at the, the situation market-wise in Southeast Asia, it is a need of phosphorus. So it's no use of taking it out from the organic material as we prefer doing in Europe. So uh, repurposing of sludge for reuse demands a drying process and granulating pelletizing, as I said. So we have a well-established market in Vietnam for first lysol with sewage sludge as a raw material. And we welcome a cooperation with SEMCORP to develop that field. So thanks a lot for your attention. Very good. Thank you so much, Turlay. And then we're going to hand over the stage to um, uh, the last company in our group today. Uh, it's called River Recycle, and we have Janne Nordinen. Janne, over to you. Thanks, Sami. So, uh... Our company River Recycle cleans the rivers, recycles the plastic, and provides waste management. My name is Janne Nuutinen, and I'm a COO of River Recycle. So, uh, a few words about the problem. Uh, about 90% of all the plastic waste that reaches the world's oceans gets flushed through the rivers. Littering windblown waste, industrial waste, and municipal waste. Once the uh, plastic gets into the sea, it decomposes very slowly. So who we are? This is our key team. Uh, uh, the headquarters are based in Helsinki and Singapore. Local operations are managed in India, Indonesia, Thailand, 
Philippines, Nigeria and Vietnam by local team members. Uh, our company River Recycle is, is, is established about two years ago and the second largest shareholder is Lamor Corporation, also a Finnish company. Lamor is a global leader in marine oil spill recovery and uh, their reference include the deep water horizon cleanup in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Lamor team includes about uh, 1200 people around the world and it's also an important resource of river recycle when we'll need it. Uh, our goal is stop over 60% uh, of ocean plastic accumulation by establishing 500 river cleaning and plastic recycling points on the banks of the world's most polluting rivers. We have developed a global river cleaning as a free service business model and the system uh, which removes plastic waste from heavily polluted rivers. Uh, we clean the rivers of plastic by creating a sustainable circle of business that uses the plastic as a raw material. Uh, River Cycle connects multiple parts of the waste management system to provide a holistic solution to treat collected plastic waste. Our project remove plastic from the environment and establish uh, waste management systems to create the collected plastic. Waste, treat, uh, waste treatment is a crucial part of the river recycle system. Uh, collected waste then can be mechanically recycled and uh, are, are sold for recycling, while paralysis is used to convert typically low value waste like flexible packaging and so into resources. Additionally, uh, our project uh, seek to find solutions to organic waste like composting. Uh, these solutions help to bring income to fund the project and provide the further incentive for uh, the collection and use of plastic and other waste. Land-based segregation collection is established uh, alongside uh, river cleanup sites. The land-based collection system provides uh, a means to engage local communities to transit onto land-based collection in the long term. Uh, today, uh, the project development of river recycle covers uh, about nine countries with the help of a dedicated team of professionals around the world. Uh, currently in India, uh, River Recycle is installing a project that will clean up the Miti River in central Mumbai. Uh, our team expects to catch up uh, to 50 tons of plastic waste daily and preventing it from it from flowing into the ocean. Uh, we also uh, building a project in, in Sitarum River, Indonesia. Uh, by the way, the Sitarum River is one of the most polluted rivers of, of the planet. Uh, our project is expected to retrieve between the 70 to 200 tons of plastic waste from this heavily polluted river on a daily basis. So what we are offering for Southeast Asia, uh, we will take care of the funding, uh, arrange for the manufacture, transport and installation of the river cleanup unit, uh, arrange for the installation of the pyrolysis unit with the technology providers, uh, arrange for necessary trainings to operate and maintain the machineries, and uh, of course, handle the sale of the paralysis oil produced. What we are looking for? Yes, dirty river, of course. Well, the rivers and water rivers that often have a high vol volumes of floating plastic. And uh, also that uh, there's need to be a local interest in the river uh, being cleaner. For example, uh, a municipality, city level, local community and so and uh, also that the river leads directly to the ocean. And, and uh, alternative feedstock is also very important uh, because during the uh, uh, dry season, uh, 
there's a, I mean, uh, there's a very, uh, the amount of blasting in the rivers will be very significantly between the seasons. And also local partner is, is important. Uh, we can also implement project in, in two ways, uh, river cleanup and pyrolysis and or paralysis unit only. Uh, well, in Singapore, uh, for example, there are not so much dirty rivers that we can clean up, but uh, we can uh, create value in circular economy. Uh, economy waste management, as well as a field of chemical recycling for, for Singapore's needs. Uh, our team has a high level of expertise related to recycling as well as uh, petrochemical sector. So uh, we are very interested to like uh, set up a pilot pilot project in, in Singapore and uh, looking for strategic partners and, and investments. So uh, Please visit our, our impact page. There you will see our, our concept in, in, in visually sized. Thank you from my part. All right. Thank you so much, Jan, for sharing that. Good. So that was the last presentation from, uh, from the Nordic side. And now maybe we can open the floor for the, for the questions. Uh, Adrian, Kitai, do you have any specific questions at this point for any of the Nordic companies, or do you prefer yeah. them to um, have, a, have a perhaps one to one meeting with them in the next? Um, I think I, we have a couple of questions. I just want to check with my colleague Daniel from the waste uh, team. Do you have any questions that you might want to go ahead first, since we just end the section on the waste companies? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I have uh, three questions. I have questions for three companies, uh, Terra Marine, and uh, Google Applied and Biogas. So maybe I start with the biogas first. Um, so this uh, pretreatment of food waste, right? Can I understand? Um, I understand that your process also removes plastics from the food waste, like uh, plastic film materials, like uh, plastic packaging, particularly. Uh, plastic um, bags. Uh, um, how much plastics can be removed in terms of percentage before and after the treatment? I understand that. That's question one. Second question is at the end of that process, uh, is the end product wet? That means is your process a wet process or is it a dry process? Sami, would you like me to answer that? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, first, uh, the uh, removal of, oh, basically in pretreatment is removal of packaging material. That, that, that is the most, uh, um, uh, or the, 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 the vital part of it. Uh, but uh, also we, we, together with the waste streams, we, we, we know that uh, textiles, uh, parts etc cutlery uh, uh, will come in with the waste but uh, regarding plastics yes uh, in we run our system in in our two uh, we could also have three steps it, depending on the screen we use in, in the biceps but in the first step we remove all, approximately 70 percent of, of, of the impurities and basically that is plastics uh, in the second uh, bicep uh, we use a, a, a smaller or, or screen and, and we remove up to 25% uh, more of the, 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 the plastics or, or the impurities, I would say. It's, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, our system doesn't uh, uh, cut or, 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 or size reduction, uh, have any size reduction on, on plastic. That means that we are very, very able to remove uh, plastics uh, in, in, in the system in, in the way it works, uh, comparing to hammer mills and other kinds of uh, uh, equipment in use. 
uh, they don't use that much water in the process. So the, the machine uh, operates in a, with a rather high uh, dry solids. Uh, uh, that is that is a, a beneficial, um, especially in markets where where you don't have access to 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 um, to water or processed liquid. But um, but uh, but uh, and uh, yeah, uh, that works works very well. Uh, normally, uh, this is a uh, it's the waste is rather i would say it's it's not liquid but it, it it's approximately 35 i guess uh, 35 40 percent uh, dry solids in, in, in the waste when it uh, comes into the the, the, the pretreatment plant but um after bicep uh number one or the the the, the separation step one then it's a it's a, a pumpable uh, um, uh, liquid but we convey it in both the, with the, to pump it to bicep two and further to the storage tanks, et cetera. But we can also convey it with 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 uh, with uh, a screw conveyor. But that is a little bit up to um, the the nature of, of, of the substrate. That is something we always discuss with the uh, operators of the the digesters because there, there's a different views on 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 how they want the the, the substrate to to to. To occur, but uh, that is not a, a big problem. It's a, actually it's a very, very simple. It's uh, we process it as dry if you want to have it uh, rather dry, or we can process it uh, to, to to as liquid as you want. It's just a matter of how much processed liquid we add to to the, to the system. Uh, is that an answer to your two questions? Yeah. Yes, I think good enough answer. We can take it offline. Okay. Otherwise, I can go in deep into details, but I, I think that is better suited for our one-to-one meeting. Okay, no problem. The second question is for N2 apply. Um, so, um, your plasma uh, method of... Uh, uh, so, I see that there's a bio gas that is used for the plasma, uh, run the plasma, but there's also a bio gas that is generating electricity to run uh, the grid, right? Uh, so, 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 so the biomass, sorry, the biogas is generated to power the plasma, but also to send to the grid. So, can I try to understand, right, in terms of energy, uh, uh, is it an energy, energy positive or energy negative uh, process? As in, is there a net energy uh, delivered to the grid, or you know, because usually plasma is pretty energy. Uh, your your uh, voice did not come through very clearly, but I hear you are asking about the energy uh, in the process and uh, whatever comes out of the biogas plant, that is not our table. Um, in the presentation, I was uh, pointing towards the food waste that this could potentially represent uh, 1.25 terawatt hours uh, delivered to the grid. And from that, we would uh, use some of this energy uh, to run our plasma. I um, see. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think then that's clear. Uh, I had the misunderstanding that, uh, yeah, your company supplies the whole process chain. No, we do not. But we we are definitely contributing to make this process even more sustainable because we will then make a marketable product. It's in itself is a product. The digestate is today used as fertilizer. However, with our process where we are enriching it with nitrogen that we are pulling out from the air, uh, created by this plasma, uh, then we are uh, giving and delivering a much more potent uh, fertilizer uh, for okay. further use. Okay, I understand. Um, the third question for Terra Marine. Um, I understand from the presentation that one of the feedstocks that are possible is uh, sewage sludge. Am I right? And uh, so, first question is. Uh, um, you know, sewage sludge from what part of the process of uh, municipal wastewater plant? 
And a second question is uh, that sewage sludge, uh, is it possible to extract the liquid fertilizer or make liquid fertilizer from, from that sewage sludge? Can you, comment on, can you comment on that, please? Uh, on, you're on mute. You're muted. Still muted. Okay. Uh, yes, we are, we are using sewage sludge, and uh, and uh, if you look at um, uh, specific to to Singapore, there you have the dewatering of the sludge, and after the dewatering, it is dried actually, uh, like they do at the Changi works. And uh, when it comes out from that process, actually, then it is uh, uh, doable to use it as a fertilizer. Because we, if you look at the, the agriculture in uh, Southeast Asia, uh, there are the, the farmers are only using dried fertilizer in, in, in pelletized products, actually. So what so, we are doing is that we, so, we need that drying, yes. I see. Tozo uh, Tolev, if I may interrupt, uh, I, I example, uh, my colleagues may know better on the sewage sludge treatment in Singapore. So I understand that uh, uh, the sewage sludge, the digestate that is uh, uh, exiting the digesters, all right? Uh, yep. Today it is being dried in a furnace yep. into pallets and then uh, sent for final disposal. Um, so you're saying that, am I right to understand that instead of putting it through the dryer, it goes through your process uh to to extract the or uh, to extract the nutrients and and the understand and my interest is whether liquid fertilizer can be made rather than the pellets well uh, if we uh, what we are doing actually normally from a, a biogas plant you are making a kind of a cake with 25 up, maybe up to 30 percent dry matter and that is actually the starting point of this. And then you have this cake. It is, that can be in, industrialized, used in Europe by machinery and everything. But when you want to use the, the, this uh, product in a more uh, simple farming uh, environment, then you need to dry it. And after the drying, we are pelletizing it. And we are also adding nutrients in it to make different kind of recipes. We are adding material into it to make it dilutable. So it very fast dilutes for the farmer's use, actually. So my, uh, so from our, my, uh, and that is interesting because in, in, in cities like in Singapore, you have in Japan and Korea and, and places where you have uh, established a kind of gate fee because this is actually something that is burnt many places today. Then our my viewpoint is then you can actually have a, make a good business of it by using it as a fertilizer uh, when you have that situation. But I don't think that um, we are not using uh, the, the, the biosolid as a kind of a liquid fertilizer. That is more uh, 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 the things that comes more from, from food processing. Um, eventually also from, uh, from food waste, actually, but then you need to evaporate it. So you have a, a dry matter content of 20, 30, or even higher, actually, in this, uh, this uh, dry matter in the liquid afterwards. I see. So because I, I, in your presentation, there's a slide, uh, there was a slide that, that seems to suggest that liquid fertilizers can be made from your process. So uh, I'm interested yeah, to understand how that yeah. can be done. Liquid fertilizer is, is also a potential product. But then, as I said, I, I would not prefer to use them biosolid with that one, but more other, other products, because this is then used in, uh, in, uh, in the farms, like an ir in the irrigation system and things like that. And um, so then it should be other material that is used. So for biosolid, I would say pelletized fertilizer, it was we are making from a dry product. Okay. Then. Mr. Wong, could I comment on that? Yes, please. Uh, 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 through our process in, in Reclima with uh, biogas, the result we produce today about 150,000 tons of fluid based on, on food waste. Uh, and we, we, uh, we, uh, we uh, 
we take out some of the dry stuff and use the, the fluid for uh, the, the agriculture in, in Norway. But, but, but uh, we do not palletize, we do just the fluid. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. Well, the reason I ask is that, you know, in Singapore, there's no farms, uh, no, no, uh, no large farms like uh, in Norway or, or you know, uh, countries where, where farming is one of the key industries. So Singapore doesn't have any uh, farms, uh, but we do have vertical farms and indoor farms. And that's where liquid fertilizer do come into play. Um, the solid fertilizers, um, you know, today is used as a fuel for, uh, or rather it's not used as a fuel at all. It's just dried and then uh, sent into the land fuel. But there's a potential that, you know, if it could be used as a fuel, then um, yeah, it, it could be a renewable fuel then, you know, mm. for another process. Uh, but rather than burning it, I was looking at the oh, yeah. possibility yeah, of whether yeah, we could extract the nutrients into a liquid fertilizer first. I think what, what you say there is what I've seen in Singapore directly, the, the, the sludge is used as a incinerated and it's a quite high gate fee to incinerate it. So it would be a much more... Um, uh, economically, actually, to uh, to to, the, to to transport it to uh, let's say to our market in Vietnam and use it as a fertilizer. There's a lot of saving, both uh, like having a much better environmental history and also save money by doing it that way. Uh, Danek, may I also add a, a few things? Uh, you, if I guess you have already calculated that. When it comes to the purity of the the the, the, the substrate, that um, at least uh, during our uh, the uh, old technology so far is that it be approximately around four or five percent of, of impurities that follows the the, the, the the substrate that could be settled in a, in a, in in the digester tank so or in a storage tank. But we are also we know that this this will be an issue for the future. Uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, that so new equipment will come into the processing line to make to purify it even more. Uh, whether we want to manage to purify it 100%, that it's uh, not a, a question I would uh, would answer right now. But but I think that we can improve on the last part of it uh, also. That is just one thing I want to mention. The the second thing is that what you have been discussing now, I think it's extremely important that. Along the years or over the years I've been in the industry, there have always been uh, some sort of question uh, or a problem, at least here in Scandinavia, to, to spread the digestate state in a wet form because there are restrictions when you can do that. Uh, we have had some requests early on from, from, from uh, uh, yeah, uh, countries uh, in the south that would like to improve uh, their 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 their, their uh, or, or to not to, imp to 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 change from artificial fertilizer into to more uh, bio fertilizer, but it must be in a, a dry form because it, you can't make a, a sort of commodity out of it unless you, you you are able to 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 store it and ship it in a in in a good way, and I think that is something that uh, my colleagues uh, on that part of the, the value chain should look deeply into because it's, it's a huge demand and taking into account that artificial fertilizer is very uh, power uh, you need uh, you know, a lot of electricity and others to, 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 to manufacture and it's also very expensive. I think it could be a, 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 a really a good business opportunity also to do exploit or to develop and exploit the digital state in a different way that I'm known with here in Scandinavia so far. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ola, and thank you. Uh, Daniel, do yeah. you have any other questions? Uh, I'm, I'm good now. Um, okay. Over to Taiki. Okay, thank you so much, Daniel. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I think in the interest of time, I would like to ask one question, but I do have a few questions for um, a couple of the first five companies that presented on the water solutions. 
Um, maybe can I just go straight to Belmont? I think during your presentation, you mentioned about the sludge optimization solution. I think that is something of interest to SEMCORP because for centralized wastewater facility, we do have um, sludge drying and, and sludge management. Is your solution a control system or some kind of software? And is this software then compatible with any type of sludge, traditional sludge drying systems? The reason I ask is because some of our sludge dryers in our China plants uh, may not always be you know, coming from an international branding. It could be a local branding. So I'm just trying to understand that kind of contact compatibility with your product. Yes. Thank you for this interest, interesting question and comment. And, uh, and uh, yes, this uh, Valmet SDO, this is a uh, control application. So this is a software application. And uh, in this software package, we, we have uh, our Valmet uh, real-time measurement together with this uh, multivariable technical con control application. And uh, it is possible to uh, promote this also to other countries as well. And, uh, and uh, this is actually a very unique application. So we haven't seen this kind of application by other suppliers so far. And we are happy to tell more about this application, more detail with you. Yeah, sure. I think we can take that discussion offline. Um, yes. Yeah, then that's my question for Wellman. I think the other question I have is for Sophie Filtration. I think it's interesting to see that you have a new um, type of filtration method that is not membrane. Um, just trying to understand um, whether is there any, it seems like the, the, the company is still quite young. Um, what are the plans to venture into the China market with um, your technology and where would you see your technology be fitting in with um, other competitors in the membrane space? Yes, uh, correct. It's, uh, it's a membrane yeah, in a way, but it's a metal membrane. Um, so, uh, so in that regard, we are different. So we are looking at those niche applications, for example, where the temperatures are high and you couldn't use any polymeric uh, uh, membranes. Uh, and we are looking at those uh, industries where you, where you require a very robust system to treat. So it's, it's quite, uh, uh, maybe violent is not the right word, but it's very efficient, the self-cleaning. So it's mechanical self-cleaning. We use uh, a one and a half kilowatt ultrasound to clean the screen and we have a like a, a, a air assisted back pulse system that hits the screen from inside and out uh, up to with up to eight bars uh, uh, pressure so that's a, a huge dynamic hit that it causes so we are looking at cases where where you are uh, maybe it can be a coal powered uh, uh, power generation plant it can be upstream oil and gas where you would normally use back filters or cartridge filters to to remove those fine particulates and and you're looking for a solution that you don't that doesn't require a manual operation so it would be automatically self-cleaning system just a, just a couple of cases of course and that's one thing that we are uh, looking for to to learn from this program is uh, what are those opportunities in 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 your parts of the world Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for your um, reply. I think we probably would like to follow up with you offline. I think maybe we could also exchange some information to understand more about your technology and we'll be happy to share more about our projects pipeline, um, certain industries that we may um, see a fit in with regards to our potential collaboration. Um, just want to check with Adrian, you have any other questions with regards to the solutions that were presented today? Um, not at the moment, but I, I think we'll reach out to the companies one by one uh, with, uh, if we have more detailed questions. But I would like to thank everyone for presenting uh, and you've given us a lot to think about. Yeah, okay. So um, back to Sammy. All right. Okay. Um, I know that we are pretty much done now in, in terms of time-wise. Um, Kita and Adrian and, and Daniel, Daniel if, if we have any questions coming from our companies, is it okay to perhaps collect those and send those to uh, via email? Yeah, sure. I think um, with the profile of the companies that you sent to us, we, we have the contact details. 
Yep. Um, that will allow us to reach out separately to the various companies. Yeah. Yeah. But what I mean is, if if there are any questions from from these companies regarding new operations, how do you? Yeah. You know, yeah. So maybe we collect in the sake of uh, time, so we we can collect those and send those to separately. So. Uh, okay. Sure. All right. Okay. Super. Very good. Uh, so thank you so much, Adrian, Kitai, and uh, It was such a pleasure again uh, to be connected with you. Thank you again for supporting our program. And uh, uh, we will then continue the conversation in those one-to-one uh, -one, uh, meetings later on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Thank you. 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 Thank you.